It's time now for Bible Talk. Join Gary Gibbs and John Bradshaw as they open the Bible to deepen our understanding of God's Word. Hi, and welcome to Bible Talk, where we talk about the Bible and how the Bible affects you today. I'm John Bradshaw. And I'm Gary Gibbs. As we've been talking over the last few Bible Talk programs about things in the world that are seeping into Christianity and challenging Christians in their experience, it becomes pretty obvious that... uh, it's becoming increasingly challenging to live as a Christian being in the world and not of the world. It's as though the devil's got an agenda to shake people any way he can away from their faith in God. It seems like on every side, John, entertainment, uh, fashions, all sorts of things are costing our senses that do not enable the Christian to have a pure mind and to think on heavenly things. There's a, there's a very important verse in the Bible, in the book of Philippians, chapter 4 and verse 8. Now, I wonder if we can kind of use this as a theme for our, for our Bible talk program today. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, that ought to kind of be a, a theme for uh, the Christian to live by. You know, what we think on really determines who we are, because what you feed your brain actually shapes your character and, and makes you who you are. I remember talking to uh, my mother years ago, and she would, you know, she, she worked, she had a job, but she also would watch a couple soap operas. There were a couple of shows that she liked. And I had been studying the Bible, and I learned that, you know, by beholding, you become changed, the Bible says. What you watch, what you view, you become that. And these soap operas, they're really trash. I mean, they're just one long affair. You know, one affair might take uh, two seasons or three seasons to accomplish. It might take a year and a half before somebody dies from some disease. But daily, you know, you're watching this thing unfold. And I told my mother, I said, you know, that stuff's not good for you. And she said, I'm not going to run out and do this stuff. I said, it's it's just not really feeding your mind with wholesome stuff. And I remember hearing some line in the uh, show that day when I was talking to her and the tone of voice and everything. And boy, do you know, that evening, my mother said the same type of thing with the same type of voice. It was just like an automatic playback. And she says, well, it's not affecting me. Yeah, we know it is. What goes in goes in. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. A woman for that matter too. What you focus on, it goes in and it affects your character and and, and it affects what you are. So we need to stop and think a little bit about the the kind of things we're putting into our our minds, into our hearts, and therefore into our experience. I want to pause a moment and let you know we've got an offer for you. We want you to contact us. We'll give you a number soon and an address and an email address. We want to offer you a little book called Baptized Paganism. Contact us. It's a provocative title, but you'll find some wonderful information in there, and you'll be directed to Jesus as the the guide of your Christian experience. The Bible says that we're not to be conformed to this world in Romans 12, verse 2, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, every Christian wants to live a life that is demonstrating the good will of God and His glory, don't we? Sure. Well, if we're going to do that, we have to have different minds. Our minds have to be renewed by God's Spirit. And in order for that to happen, we can't be conformed to this world. That means we cannot let our minds feast on the entertainment of this world. That's going to transform us into the world's image instead of God's image. And truthfully, according to the world's, the unconverted world's way of looking at things, normal isn't good enough. The Bible says we cannot be conformed to this world. I've had Christian parents tell me, oh, my boy's a good boy. He's a good, normal kid. I I accept what you mean. You probably mean he's balanced and he's not a lunatic and whatnot. But if you're you're happy that your kid is just like all the other kids, then you might want to think again. God calls us and our children to a, a higher calling and a higher standard to higher ground. Um. I spoke recently with a young man, Christian, apparently, in church. I know his parents real well, and and they're proud of their boy. But in talking to their boy, he told me, you know, John, over the years, in fact, he said, all my life, all I've ever been doing is just turning up to church. I've just been there. 
and that's it. I'm only there because my parents take me. So his heart wasn't into it. He wasn't having a relationship himself oh, he with told the Lord. Me that, he told me that straight out. But his parents didn't realize that. Well, he is going to church, and he's a good boy. Mm-hmm. So we've got to be careful what we're feeding our mind, just like what we're feeding our bodies, so that we grow strong spiritually, and we put the right um, influences into our thought processes, you see. So these aren't... Um legalistic requirements. We're not saying here that you don't do certain things in order to gain favor with God. These are practical, common sense things. You know, uh, here's a Bible text, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Common sense verse here. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Or another way of saying that the RSV says, bad company ruins good morals. And that can be the associates, your friends and, and work associates, kids at school and so on. Or it could be, uh, for some people, their closest companion is the television set. And so on TV, you're going to bring into your home uh, rapists, murderers, uh, seducers, the adulterers. Pro- the profane. The profane. The the curse. The people that would curse. If you were to be around a person that's using four-letter words every other sentence, you wouldn't want to be around them, but you would bring them into our home because somebody said it's entertainment. These are stars. They have star value. And that type of company will corrupt good morals. And, and let's stop and think now. It's not just the overtly bad stuff that, you know, the, the, the real crass people. But uh, and, and I would hate to be offensive here, but I think it needs to be said. You notice on television now there are far more, more and more leading characters who are portrayed as homosexuals. Now, it's not, it's not so much promoting homosexuality and, and soliciting for people to become homosexuals, but what it's doing is it's normalizing that behavior mm-hmm. and promoting that behavior by making it attractive and okay. Mm-hmm. And you see, when you imbibe that and your children grow up seeing that, they grow up to be educated to think, well, this is okay. This is normal. It might even be good. And so this is the effect that TV has. It's, it's a, it can be a leavening effect. Nothing wrong with it per se. There's some very good things out there. But to be a Christian in the world and not wanting to be of the world and wanting to be not conformed to the world but transformed by the renewing of your mind must pay some attention to what's going on into the mind and TV is a source of of a lot of that which goes into our minds and affects our thought processes. The whole battle of Christianity, the whole issue of being a Christian is what happens in the mind and the battle between good and evil takes place in the mind. That's why we have to protect the portals of the soul. We have to be careful what we see, what we hear. Now we're not to go seclude ourselves off in the middle of uh, 2,000 acres and hide in the middle of the woods and (laughs) And, and live there all by ourselves with no stimuli. And there are people who would do that. They say, well, in order to survive, I'm going to go and live miles from anywhere and cut myself off. I don't think that's biblical in as much as, in as much as. I'm not going to knock someone doing that, but in as much as the Bible says you're the salt of the earth. Mm-hmm. Salt's only good when it gets in and mixes up. You're the light of the world. Well, you know, you've got to shed light someplace. Shedding light out in the back of nowhere with no neighbors and no friends and no associates. I'm not sure that's the answer either. And neither do you have to live in the middle of the red light district either and say, well, I'm going to be salt here. There there is a place where you do need to protect yourself, but you also need to be able to influence people. But this battle takes place in the mind. Sure. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And here's where he says the strongholds are, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, Now, that's a powerful verse. Our thought life is is something that's very difficult to control. When you are watching things that are suggesting impure thoughts, whether they're suggesting lying, stealing, uh, sexual themes— We have to control that thought life because those thoughts lead you away from the way of God, and they actually affect how you act and how you respond and react to others. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Our hearts need to be pure. In another place, it says, whereas the the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. I like this thought you've picked up on here about the thought processes because for some They may not watch 
any negative things on television or any objectionable videos of any kind. But you know, when someone crosses them, they get angry and they, they, they dwell on that and, and it festers in their mind or they plot and scheme and imagine. It's time to get a grip on what you allow your thoughts to meditate upon. Again, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And there is power through the Holy Spirit of God to bring this thing into captivity, the obedience of Christ. I had a friend, she told me, she said, you know, I just, uh, I can't I can't control my temper. She said, I lose it. She said, I get angry at my kids. And she said, and then I don't have energy for anything more any longer either. I'm tired, I'm sluggish. And the more I listened to her, I said, listen, have you had your blood sugar checked? Have you ever had that checked out? It sounds like you're hyper or hypoglycemic. You need to get that checked out. She said, really? I said, yeah, everything you're telling me uh, sounds like you have some sort of blood sugar problem. She went and got checked out, and sure enough, she was hyperglycemic. And once she started regulating her blood sugar, she started feeling better, and she found it easier to live the Christian life. Friend, you may be finding it difficult to live the Christian life because of what you're feeding your mind. You think that it's okay to sit and read certain type of books or watch certain type of TV programs or visit certain websites. or may And some of this stuff actually may be wholesome stuff, but you're not feeding your heart and your mind with the Word of God. So you're not training your mind to meditate on the Word of God. And you're finding it difficult to enjoy Bible study, to enjoy worship service, to enjoy fellowship with other Christians, and you're finding it difficult to live for God, you got to look at your diet. you got to look at your diet. you got to get the junk food out and get the wholesome food in. And some people, they, they get around in a bit of a funk. If they just got some exercise and got the blood moving, they'd feel a whole lot better. Hey, we, we're making an offer today, baptized paganism. Contact us at our contact info at the end of this program. We'll get that to you completely free. We would recommend that. We believe it would be a blessing to you. I think one good rule of life to follow is if you can picture Jesus doing something with you, then it's probably something wholesome and good. You know, would Jesus watch this TV program with me? Would Jesus go to this particular place with me? Would he would he listen to this music? Bible says, whatever you do, do to the glory of God. And if we'll follow that rule of life, we'll find that we will be more blessed as a result of it. There are some biblical imperatives that would, that would protect us from the devil's influences. Ephesians 5.11 says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. There's some things we just ought to keep away from. And Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.22, and he said, keep thyself pure. Now, that's a challenge, isn't it, in this world where the devil is constantly on the attack? And that's why we need to be concerned about what we put into our minds, what we see, what we hear, so that we can keep ourselves pure and we can rejoice in the Lord. And thank God for the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon, and He's coming back for people who've been transformed by His grace, by the renewing of their mind. We pray that that be your experience, and we hope you'll join us again for more next time here on Bible Talk. If you'd like more information on what we've been studying today, we have a comprehensive Bible study guide we'd love to share with you that's absolutely free. This study includes many of the texts we've just discussed and expands on the subject, including information you'll want to know. To receive this free informative Bible study guide, simply call, write, or email and ask for Baptized Paganism. The toll-free number is 866-BIBLE-SAYS. That's 866 866- 242 You can write to us at Bible Talk, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. That's P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Or email us at Bible Talk at lifetalk.net. Bible Talk at lifetalk.net. Bible Talk has been produced in association with Amazing Facts in the studios of Life Talk Radio.